I really think about the apostles and how they were sent out into the world. And I think about their incredible courage, the courage it took, first of all, to travel to places that they had never been before, to go to areas where they might not even been received because of their background, their culture, who they were actually, just kind of poor, simple men. I think about the mandate of Christ as they were sent out to do just these incredible things that you're going to hear about in the gospel today. But they did so with courage and with strength and with confidence. And thirdly, I recognize something in my own heart that there are times when God is asking me to reach out or to accept the mission that God has put into my heart. And I wonder, how do you feel about those missions that God invites you to, to undertake? to receive in your heart. Sometimes it can be an interior mission to kind of face some struggle within your own heart. Sometimes it's an exterior mission in your own home to express an act of charity, of love to someone that maybe there's a little tension in your heart. Or finally, it could be going outside, going outside to those situations that you don't always feel comfortable with. I want you today, this Saturday, to think of is there one possible little mission that God has put into your heart? One exp experience that God keeps putting before you to say, you know, reach out to this person or pray for this person. Let's follow the example of the apostles today and go out into the world and express God's love for others. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Mark, and as we gather recognizing that the gospel really invites us to examine the, the courage of those that were sent by Christ. And by our baptism, we are sent. We are sent to proclaim to be a witness. Let's call to mind our sins. Ask the Lord for his forgiveness and his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up St. Mark, your evangelist, and endowed him with the grace to preach the gospel, grant, we pray, that we may so profit from his teaching as to follow faithfully in the footsteps of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud and bestows favor on the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your worries upon him because he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling like a roaring lion looking for someone to, to devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters throughout the world undergo the same sufferings. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory through, Jesus, through Christ Jesus will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you have suffered a little. To him be dominion forever. Amen. I write you this briefly through Silvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, exhorting you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Remain firm in it. The chosen one at Babylon sends you greeting, as does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a loving kiss. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. The heavens proclaim your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can rank with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the sons of God? Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name, they rejoice all the day. And through your justice, they are exalted. May the words of the Lord be in my heart, on my lips, that I may worthily and joyfully proclaim this holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. I think there's a great paradox that's existing in, the, in our country or during this time in the fact that there really is a mission that God is inviting all of us to participate in to be sent to go forth. And the, in my prayer this morning, I was looking at those four words that St. Peter speaks. He said that this, the God of glory will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you've suffered a little. And I was thinking this time of limitation, this time that all of us are facing, 
that we have to recognize that it's just a little time. And it may be a little bit more time, honestly, but that God will is in the process of really restoring, confirming, and strengthening and establishing us foundationally, keeping us strong, keeping us rooted. So one of the things I want you to pray about is, are you letting the Lord restore you during this time? Or are you just filling your time with, with worry and anxiety? Are you trusting that God is giving strength every day? I have to say in my own life that what I've seen is it's um, a time when I've had to step outside of myself and really understand what God is asking of me as a pastor, how to be present to my people in this, in this new way. And the second thing that I was chewing on in, the, in my prayer this morning is just recognizing, do I believe in this gospel? Do I trust that God is equipping us or giving us the grace to pick up this deadly thing, to not drink anything that's going to harm us? And I was thinking, you know, it's really about, it. it's a question of the profound faith that all of us must have. Because there are people that are still suffering but if they are uniting their pain to God, to the Lord, if they are offering their suffering, folks, then we can't ask God to take away their cross. What God is asking of all of us is to become conformed to Christ, to be established into Christ, to become like Christ. And that's the invitation, I think, that we find ourselves in this experience that there's worry and fear, and, but we have to trust. Anyway, I want you to take away those words today to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish. Which of those words speaks to you today so that you can truly understand that God is in charge? He's inviting all of us. confident that God our Father is with us. Let us place the, these petitions on this holy altar and also before the Lord. We pray for the church and all who serve in the church <clears throat> that we will be open to being sent as missionaries of God's love, confident that God provides, equips, establishes us, restores us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you, to inspire all of those who are making significant decisions at this time, that you give them a spirit of wisdom and confidence, humility and trust, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, for those who are tired, for those who are burdened, for those who are letting this time in their lives overwhelm them emotionally, with worry, with fear, Holy Spirit, confirm them in the power of God's love for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to recognize the profound opportunity of grace that you give us. This opportunity of hope, this opportunity of grace, but this opportunity to surrender our lives to you, to keep our eyes fixed on you. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, hear our prayers and those in our hearts. We ask them through your Son, Jesus, through Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So folks, I want you to put your worry or your um, concern here on the altar. And then I ask you to ask the Lord, Lord, confirm me or establish in me, restore me. That was another word. In confidence in God's presence in your life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands are made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Lord, wash me of my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we venerate the glory of St. Mark, we offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of praise and humbly beseech you that your church may always persevere in the preaching of the gospel through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds, to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So put your struggles again here, folks, and be present. I know it's really hard, but we have to keep going. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <clears throat> Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, St. Andrew, St. Mark, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. During the Gloria and then during the Agnus Dei, I was hearing in my heart, you take away, you take away, you take away. In the Agnus Dei, it was you take away the sins of the world. I would like you to ask the Lord to do two things today, to take away those doubts, those fears in your heart, and also to take away our, our feeling of being forgotten by the Lord, our feeling that God is just letting us go through this without his intervention, without his presence. Okay, so give that to the Lord. Lord, take it away and let us have confidence that the Lord will give us mercy and peace. Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we have received from your holy altar may sanctify us and make us strong in the faith of the gospel which St. Mark proclaimed through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Folks, have a beautiful Saturday. Remember, it is Saturday, so um, nice to put away your phones for a little bit, of course, after watching the Mass, and just be very open. And I'll see you tomorrow at the Mass. Um, let us continue to be courageous. God is walking with us. God bless you.